Excellent. Uh, Alfonso, question for you. So, okay, uh, first a question for the audience. How many people here have uh, tried to find an offline business, restaurant, bar, wanted to go there and couldn't find anything about them online? Okay. Uh, so, if I ask you, how many of you, the, the first thing that you find actually is a Facebook page for those businesses? Right? So, I, I think it's pretty common right now that a lot of businesses, even, you know, driving around on man, you'll see companies that say, you know, not www.companyname.com, it's facebook.com slash company name. And so this is a big challenge for, for Google. Uh, the first step uh, that many companies are taking online is instead of putting a site that's indexed by Google or indexable by Google, is a site that's on Facebook. Uh, what do you think about this? And how is Google going to react to kind of keep these businesses coming online? On the web, not Facebook. Okay, so I believe in general the fact that they are showing up as uh, a result, let's say, of a search query. As number one, it's because probably they don't have their own website. Uh, so we, all, we already have a very good solution for uh, companies that is called uh, Google Places, where companies can add all their basic information, including uh, phone numbers and so on. And, uh, most of the time when people are searching for uh, restaurants and so on, then they have the opportunity to show very high, let's say, in the listings of our organic results. Um, in general, we are seeing, uh, I mean, an uptake of places uh, in the region as well. It's the, the product is super strong in Europe and US. Uh, to be honest, we still have a small team in the region, even though we doubled the size of our team in the past year. But there are so many things and so many requests, and uh, in general, places we, is on top of our list, and we will continue to, I mean, to push for it because because we believe that, given that it's free, it can really bring a lot of value to the clients. Okay, interesting. Um, so, but you're not, you're not threatened by the fact that they're going to Facebook first because it's easy, because everyone's already on there. Um, I mean, how many people here have seen a business on places in the region? Google Places. Raise your hand. If you've seen, if you looked for a business and found it on Google Places. Okay, that's a lot, it's a lot less than people who've seen it on Facebook, right? But I will say that many Sorry companies that are, uh, let's say, that needs to have an online presence, Okay, they usually have their own websites. And thanks to our technology, they, they usually appear as number one in the organic results. And, and so they're already getting, let's say, all the benefits of being there and being number one and so on. I think the, for the businesses that need to have an online presence, I think there are very few of them that have just a Facebook page and they don't have their own website. Okay. Um. So a, a question for you, Michael. So you have, uh, you're in an interesting position now, right? Because it's, you know, right now we're, everyone's interested in the multiple screen experience, right? People are watching TV, people are using their mobile, people are maybe using their laptop. How are you taking advantage of this multi-screen experience to promote sales? Okay, uh, this is um, similar to what I mentioned before. Um, we are, of course, we have the TV channel, which is our major driving tool for, for the business, but we invested two years ago, three years ago, in an e-commerce platform. So people have access through the internet to all the products, all the videos. They can review, they can leave comments. At the same time, we are trying to set up now, uh, very soon, um, an application so that people can also Twitter about the show. So whatever they see just live on TV, they can Twitter, exchange ideas with their friends, say, watch this, recommend that, or comment on it. I think this is very important because, as you said, it's going into the direction where you have a second screen on your on your lap when you watch TV. So uh, definitely, it's, it's it's important to have that. Okay. Um, so I want to take some questions from the audience. Let me let me just add a small a small trend that you're going to start witnessing by the end of this year and next year, hopefully, which is when you actually get the big retailers from the region, the big brands, to finally come online. So you're going to see this from Al Shaya. You're going to see this from Al Fatim from Attire, all those big Lashalhub, they're all coming online. People don't realize this, and this is going to happen. So again, you're going to have a nice choice uh, for customers to make that decision, but it's important that those big brands finally start coming online too. And, uh, and once this happens, it's going to be an interesting shift then. And you're going to actually start seeing a lot more businesses coming more online, even the smaller retailers. 
because those big boys are coming online. Whether we like it or not, they're coming online. Um, when are they coming online? In Very in soon. I know Shai are going live before the end of the year. Uh, Atai are already also t talking about it. Carrefour did it about a year ago or so, but I think they got bogged down because of perishables or etc. But it's, it's very critical that those big brands, the, the, the big trading family brands, actually start coming online in the region and start giving those choices to customers, whether to pick it up from the shop, uh, to, to have it delivered, etc. Are you working with any of them, providing any of them with the specific platforms that you have? Akid. Akid. <laughs> So can you give us an example of at least one story where your platform has really s helped these guys scale their online uh, operations? Uh, it starts a lot from inventory management, way to the, to the you know, it's got to start somewhere. And uh, we, we're, we're very adamant about the supply chain to be, to be lock stock, to be in place with these people. So if you want to start with your inventory management system fully integrated, the order processing, Etc. It's got to start from there all the way down to the end consumer when he receives it. So that chain cannot be broken for it to run fluidly and seamlessly. Uh, so a lot of the work that we're doing now is integrating with their inventory management systems. And we start there and it's all the, sometimes we call it a, a, a virtual stock or a virtual warehouse. Okay, so it's, that, that's a lot of the work that we're discussing and doing with them right now. Can you give us a, a success story or an example of a success story? They haven't switched on yet. So. Not here, maybe in another region that you work in? Uh, Inditex, uh, in, uh, in Europe, we do a lot of deliveries for Inditex Group in Europe and not many people are aware of that. So we're, we're plugged into Inditex in Europe. We do, do by the thousands, they only, they only launched their online uh, uh, shops, I think, not even six or eight months ago. And it was an experiment for them. So whatever learnings we've picked up with them there, we're going to make sure to apply them for the regional brands here too. So, and you've got Citrus. You know, it's... So, <laughs> for us, he's, he's we, right there. We started, uh, when yeah. was it, 2000, um, 2005 with RMX and it was a complete solution. It was like uh, not only the, the, the delivery, but it was also the warehousing, importing, everything that is logistics related. So there was a, for sure a complete solution, yes. Thank you. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to the audience and take some questions from the audience. We've got the lady here, with high hand raised. I actually would like... I actually would like to contribute because I work in an offline uh, retail with an offline retailer. It's hard to hear you. Sorry. Can you... Yeah, and stand up. Perfect. Can tell us tell us your name and what you do, and then um, ask the question. My name is Jinan Zoya. I work for Virgin Mega Store, so I'd like to contribute because I work for an offline retailer. And I'd like to answer the question you asked: Why does the retailers, uh, uh, the offline retailers, are hesitant to go in uh, into online? I think it's for two reasons. Um, first, opportunity cost. Uh, the current retailers, uh, they have so much opportunity in scaling their current business and expanding and opening physical stores, which is something they understand really well. So unless the opportunity is huge for them, it's really difficult to, when they're weighing investment opportunities, to forego opening one store, which they're really good at, and they can easily get traffic to as opposed to learn, like opening a new store online. Um, second would be that online requires a very new nature of operation for the re existing retailers. One of them is content management, which I think is a big obstacle. If you're running a business with at least uh, 300 to 500,000 SKUs and you want to update your product, um, you need a team that's only taking pictures, that's only creating content all the time, which is something retailers right now don't do at all. And, so, and that's why companies like Rovi, for example, which is in Europe, that uh, offers uh, content or the information around uh, the latest music, the latest film, they're n they are now very much growing because retailers are using them to go online, using to source inf information. I think there's a gap in the market for that to be offered for retailers. So I just want to contribute. Thank you. Very insightful comments. Um, anyone on the panel have a reaction to that? Is this part of your offerings? She said a very important thing, which is actually all about cataloging. Yes. Getting those goods up there when you have so many thousands of SKUs, it's going to take you forever. But you need to get started with at least you know, one category. You don't have to do it all in one shot. The more you start building that index and that catalog, 
the more you'll be able to catch up with your previous inventory and etc. But and the longer you wait, the harder it will get to build that catalog. And it's it's a nightmare. And and then it's gonna boil down to Google again when it comes to the content, whether you know you get flagged for you know uh, duplicate content or not. So it's very important the content to be also original. So it's a very valid uh, concern that she has shared and, and it has to be if you want to go online you need to do it. I mean I fully understand the concerns but the, the issue is that there are still many leads happening online. So if you are not there you are missing out. This is really a key point to understand. And there are plenty of leads I mean coming uh, I mean in all different, let's say, e-commerce subsectors, and that's why if you don't have any presence, you are missing out. And these leads are growing and growing more and more, and that's why the earlier you get online, the earlier you will be able to get, let's say, a share of the pie. 